we're going to have a look at how to program an Arduino board using Code Vision AVR or CVAVR. And um, before we actually get into that, um, I thought, well, let's just quickly have a look at the connectivity of the Arduino board. Um, and it's going to be very much in a similar fashion as the box that we looked at for programming of Arduino using CH. Um, at least with those video series. So um, it's again, we assuming you've gone through those video series and seen how to go about programming uh, Arduino board with those uh, tools made available. Okay, so um, essentially, um, we've got this is our Arduino board with the again, the cell input output pins is over there. We've got our Atmega328 mic controller over there. We've got our analog pins over here. And then we've got our digital input output pins over here. And then also some, um, a digital ground and then the analog reference pin over there with our USB power supply over there. Keep in mind, our external power supply might be needed if you are going to be using maybe this board to power more than 10 milliamps of items, so maybe up to um, one amp of, um, of supply or, or sensors or auxiliary um, items. And then you can um, use this external power supply. Keep in mind this voltage would have to be regulated as well, which um, some boards do have an onboard regulator. Yeah, those onboard regulators are limited to about 100 milliamps. So you just need to look at um, the spec for each board. So with this Arduino Uno, if your sensors aren't going to be using more than 100 milliamps, you'll be safe then to be able to um, use this external power supply. Um, USB power might be still limited also with the amount of current that you're able to draw from that. Okay, so looking at that box, this is essentially the circuit diagram. So I've got on um, pin four over here. Um, of, of the Arduino board. I've got a push button going to 5 volts. I've got a toggle switch which allows me to activate the pull down resistor or not. And this pin 4 over here is um, going to be an input pin. And this in terms of the actual Arduino or the Atmel chipset that's on board is using port D pin, um, pin 4. Okay. But um, over here I've got um, pin 7, so on the Atmel chip it's actually port D pin 7. Okay, there's going to be an output, it's just going to be a digital input output pin, going through a 1K resistor to a red LED. Then pin 10 over here on our Arduino board, that is going to be an output PWM pin, it's actually connected to port B pin 2 which also acts um, as a PWM output pin with OC1B. Um, so that is what we'll be using there. Going through a 1K resistor to a green LED, which in this case will um, allow us to control the brightness of the LED with a PWM output. And then um, I've got over here, um, which is pin 11 on our Arduino board, okay? So again, this is also output PWM pin, as you can see over there. Um, this is actually port B pin 3 on the Atmel chipset that's been used, and that is um, with PWM OC2A. And that we will be using to control server motor position. Then on this side, we've got A0, and that's our analog to digital conversion pin A0 on the Arduino board. This correlates with the analog to digital compare register or the analog to digital um, input zero um, on the Atmel chipset that's been used. And that is being connected to a 10 kilo um, ohm pot or variable resistor so that we can put in the input or input voltage is going to vary from zero volts all the way up to five volts. And that's essentially a schematic a schematic diagram of this box. Um, we've got the Arduino board over here and we've got these breadboards on either side of it allowing us to connect the wires in the circuitry as in the circuit you've seen 
um, in, on a previous slide. So over here we've got a variable resistor with a pot. Over here is our servo motor. Over here is a toggle switch to activate that pull down resistor. And then here's a push button which allows us to give an input of 5 volts. This is a box with our dinner board in it. Um, as you can see we've got our dinner board over there in the center. The breadboards on the sides that have got the connections of the green LED and red LED over there. We've got a servo motor over here. We've got a variable controller over here. A push button is placed over there and a toggle switch to activate the pull down resistor is shown over there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to be programming this Arduino board that is inside of this box. And um, it's got a variable resistor on it, the servo motor and the two LEDs. So we're going to be looking at how we'll program it using Code Vision AVR because it's something that you be familiar with um, in terms of the Arduino of the um, or programming of the Arduino using CH. Um, and what commands will correlate over there. We will then go and um, once we've done all that, we will then okay, look at another example. We should be looking at more of the advanced features that Code Vision AVR offers, like interrupts and timers and things like that. Okay, so you're going to click on File, you're going to go to New, you're going to go to Project. You don't want to click on Source File though, um, you can, but you'll see the reason why we're going to a new project. It will ask you, you're about to create a new project, do you want to use a code to visit AVR? And you're going to say yes. The target AVR chip family, over here it is uh, AVR8. Um, so it's the 80 tiny at mega or 8090 um, ones. And so we are using one of those type of um, chip families on this Arduino Uno. And you're going to click OK. So this is the code wizard AVR that will come up. Um, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to select which chip you're using. So we've got on Arduino board the Atmega 328P chip. You're going to also select what the clock speed is. So the Arduino um, Uno board has got a 16 megahertz um, crystal on it. So that would be the clock speed that you would indicate over there. It is an application. You're going to go, you can go to project information over there. You can maybe um, have a project name. So, for example, you could have um, Arduino Vid. We could have version 1. You can have your author name, company names or so. You have any comments that you might wish to include over there. So, we're going to be programming an Arduino board with CBAVR. Okay, now that we've done it, we've basically looked at the first two um, options in this menu that allows us to, in, within this wizard. Next thing we're going to be looking at is the ports. So over here, um, you are able to see port B, port C, and port D. And that is what's available on this specific chipset. Um, and we're going to be basically... Um, indicating what our input and output pins. Now usually all our pins are indicated as input and it would be in a toggle state over there. Yet we've got pin um, well, pin 4 is an input um, for port D pin 4. So if we go to port D pin 4 it's seen as an input over there. Okay, And that is essentially our input from the push button. We've got um, Port D pin 7, which is an output though, this is going to the red LED. So we click on that and we indicate that it's an output. Now over here you can indicate it in terms of what is the initial state of it, 0 or 1. Um, so I use the, the sort of the example which might not be, I'm not, I'm not, um, proposing anything of, of this sort. I'm not um, saying that I agree with anything, but let's say you are a suicide bomber. You obviously, when you switch on your system, you do not want the output to the um, detonator to be a one. You want it to only maybe be activated when you push a certain button. 
So for that reason, you'll set it to a zero. And the same happens over here. What's the initial state over there? Well, initially you want it to be a zero. If you indicated this being a one, you'll switch on your Arduino board, power it up, and it would already send a, um, a pulse to your detonator. So you want to either have it as a zero, so that that's your initial state, and it's only when you push a button, then only it will output a one. Okay, so I know it's not uh, the most peaceful example, but it is one that has the most drastic effect in my mind, and now I can always remember these type of things. Okay, we got other pins um, as well that are outputs, um, which is specifically on port B, pin 2 and pin 3, because they PWM outputs. I'm not going to indicate any outputs on this port B as output for now, and you'll see a reason why. And then obviously we've got um, an analog to digital input, which is on analog to digital digital convert uh, zero. Okay, so um, you'll see over here if you come down, there's an analog to digital converter menu that you can click on. You click on that, you see ADC enabled, you click on that. Okay, now I was going to ask you what's your voltage reference? And that's usually with, with the voltage that is um, connected to the AREF pin or even to the AVCC pin. So you, if you've got a voltage connected to that, you could use that. Otherwise, you use your internal capacitance on the ARF um, pin. The clock, you can keep that, that to 1000 um, kilohertz. And then auto trigger source, you click on that and just say that's free running. Okay. You can disable digital input buffers over there. I'm just going to leave that as it is. Okay. Is there anything else? There's nothing else that we, for this specific example, that we need to indicate as expert, uh, inputs or outputs. Again, I'm just quickly going to go through the menu and show you what other options there are. So there's the external interrupt. Um, we looked at external interrupt 0 and 1. You can enable them over here if you wish. Um, so it will also um, allow you to do settings for that. We will look at that um, in the next example. You've got um, counters and timers. If you want to time something, um, and that we'll look at as well in the, in the next example. You've got a watchdog timer, um, so if you wish to use those type of features, you can. Haven't really used that much. You've got your USART or the UART. So if you want to be able to receive information or transmit information, you can do so. You can um, enable your your RX and TX interrupts. Um, I know at, at least the RX interrupt you often use, um, and we will just see what happens if we do set that. Also, something that we have for we will also be looking in, in um, further videos is parity bit checks. So, over here, you can indicate if you've got any parity, odd parity, or even parity, or no parity. Um, and, like I say, uh, like I said, you know, you could have 7 bits that are for data, or 8 bits for data, or 9 bits for data, and then you've got the stop um, bits and then your parity bits. Again, you need to make sure that both the transmitting and receiving systems have got the same settings. Okay, um, so these I'm just going to keep over there activated. You're going to see what's going to happen um, when I compile the, the code later on. And our comparator, we're not going to... Um, be looking, but you can have an analog comparator if you wish to use that. Um, those settings are available over there. If you looked at the analog to digital converter, serial peripheral interface, the SPI, you can enable that if you need to use a two wire interface. You can also in, um, enable over there an I squared C bus interface, a one wire bus interface, um, bit bang peripherals. All of these are possible. Bit bamp peripheral, you can indicate in which port it is. Like I said, um, I find normally that the USART is a more reliable communication protocols. It also probably depends on your sensors and um, devices you're communicating with. Now, alphanumerical LCD. So if you want to have an LCD, you can enable it over here. Um, you can say what type of controller it is. You can indicate how many lines there how many characters there are specific line. 
and then you can actually go and have a port allocated where these pins will be connected to and so it can be any ports that are available any bits that are available and it will be able to send to those that specific port and bit um, a uh, the different pulses that might be needed for these um, connections to the LCD display so that's if you want to use the LCD display the later versions um, do allow for um, different display types to to be integrated with these smart controllers you can also have resistive touchscreen um, if you want to use that so um, again very much the same type of system where you've got a port allocated to and you indicate which pins are going to be used over there and then you can also have a capacitive touchscreen that you could then um, enable and be able to communicate with that in a similar fashion okay so Basically, we've just had a quick overview of, of what the different options over there in these menus. We've looked at the uh, at, uh, project information, the chip we're going to use, what ports we're going to um, be using, or which pins we're going to be using as input and output pins. We've looked at the A to D converter. So essentially, those are all things that we've looked at as important. And you'll see over here when I click on Generate, um, it's going to say, okay, interrupt serial, driven serial communication is disabled. In the evaluation version, please purchase, purchase commercial versions. So I click on OK, and those options over there will be disabled. Um, like I said before, you could type out the code yourself um, for those specific interrupts. It's mainly the receive interrupt that you would be using um, to receive data. When transmitting, you could just use a print if statement, it will still be able to transmit the data. Okay, so again, if you click on generate, this is the code that will be generated for you and um, we will be able to go through this um, in a bit more detail on a bigger screen so I'm going to after I've, I've basically done all the settings you go to program generate save and exit and you want to indicate what you want to save it as um, so oh yes we need to also output the PWM something I forgot over here so if we go to um, that's what we will be using timers because for a pulse width modulation it uses timers and um, there's something you need to keep in mind as well is that if you've got a specific timer that's used you don't you want to time minimize um, you know have different timers for different operations so different timers might be used for PWM um, or others are used for timing purposes um, it's a good thing just to separate them so that um, there's not conflict or um, interference between values that might happen. Okay, so we have got um, two output PWMs. We've got the OC um, 1B, so that would be timer because it's 1B. We're looking at timer 1. Okay, so essentially in terms of your clock source, you will say that is your system clock. You will um, then over here you have uh, the clock value. And over there you can select 2000 um, kilohertz. That would be a, a, a possibly good value to select. In terms of mode, you will say um, this pH for phase, okay, and the FR, correct PWM top one is, is equal to 1CR1. And then because of pin 10 um, being or pin or the port B pin 2, which is timer is on, this OC1B timer, it's OC1B, so we're using out on B, not on A. So it's going to be a non-inverted PWM pulse that we would like to, to have. Now these settings I've actually come across these settings in a um, in a sort of a tutorial before in terms of how to go about with um, setting your PWM for um, server motors so I'm using essentially those same um, settings over here okay so essentially that's your, your PWM outputs uh, or your, your PWM settings you're going to have over there but on pin 11 or otherwise on port B pin 3 we've got OC2A which we use for the controlling of the server motor as well. So it's 2A, so therefore it's timer 2, 
yet output A. So we'll go to that setting now soon. Again, the clock source is a system clock, the clock value. So we're going to select 2000 over there. The mode over there, we're going to again say this um, phase correct PWM top um, is equal to OCR2A. Okay. And um, then we're going to say that in terms of the output, it's going to be because it's going to be out on A. It's going to be a non inverted PWM because we're using OC2A. Okay. So while well, timer 1 is using OC1B, timer 2 is using OC2A. Okay, so those are also set over there correctly as needed. All right, okay, so generate, save, and exit. Now, when I go and I do that, it's telling me port B, bit 2 is used for timer 1 OC1B pin. Do you want to be configured as an output? So I didn't indicate over here under ports for those pins to be output. The wizard was able to identify it, and it's giving me this warning, so I'm indicating it as yes. The same with port B pin 3 for timer 2 OC2A pin. So it's going to be configured as output. So I click on yes and it will change those settings in the port uh, menu over there. All right, so then it's going to ask you to save three files. Now my advice is always have the same name configuration for the three files that you're going to have. So you can keep all your files together. I'm just going to, going to call it VIT1 for all three. Another one, VIT1, and that's for the project file. And then finally, our code wizard project file, which will also be VIT1. Alright, so now that that's all done, it now has generated all this code for you and place it inside this specific um, um, window. Okay, so you'll see over here, there's a whole bunch of settings over here, a whole bunch of registers that need to be set. And um, like I mentioned before, it can take you quite some time to get all those settings um, ready and stuff. Well, we've been able to use this wizard, and within a few minutes, we are able to get all the settings done as needed, and we can start actually programming. Okay, let's just quickly go through and see what's happening. So we're starting off with hash include mega328p.h. So that's an important line to know because, I mean, you're going to obviously be programming that microcontroller. It's got a delay.h um, library also included. Um, it's probably using that for some, um, or putting it over there for some purposes you might want to use later on. Okay, um, over here you can declare your global variables if you are going to be using global variables. In the next example, we will be looking at that as well. The standard input output.h library is declared over there. Okay, then um, there's settings that are given over here, and it's all commented with what they are. So the voltage reference is the internal um, one on, R, on, on A ref. Um, so that is the setting that will be for, done for that. Reading the A to D conversion result. So um, you'll see over here, there's unsigned in read ADC. We're going to be using this function as well. So, um, and we're going to be using quite, quite a lot. Um, so this is done all the code over there for you to be able to do your analog to digital conversion. That's using this read ADC command. Okay, and then it gets to main vo void main void. So this is your main program. And just below that you declare all your local variables. So you will have always over here. Um, again, it's good, not only good practice, but CVAVR will also tell you if you time put your declaring variables maybe just before your while loop, it will say to you, listen here, you need to declare this in the beginning of the code. I have seen that happen. Your cost, a uh, crystal oscillator division factor is one, and all those settings are placed over there. Your input and output ports are initialized, so all these um, different bits 
are set to zero ones. Um, you'll see over there is a couple of ones over there to show that those are outputs on port um, B. That was what the wizards changed for us automatically. Um, we've got port C and port D being initialized. We've got our timer zero initialized initialization happening over there. Um, well, it stopped because we're not using it. You'll see timer one initialization with all the settings that we've um, indicated over there, and we'll go and code that off for us. Our timer two or counter two initialization is happening. We've got our interrupts initializations for the different timers. We've got our UART initialization, um, our analog comparator initialization, SPI initialization, TWI initialization. So all of these initializations are done for you. And essentially, we come to WOW1, and then it says, place your code here. So all the different setups that have been done in the beginning of the code for you, and you can actually just focus on placing your code over here. So remember, WOW1, because we want this loop to keep on going an infinity amount of times, and because the microcontroller is um, operating so quickly, and this will allow us to then um, keep on having this code running um, over and over. Okay, so now that we've had a look at that, let's have a look at um, some code. So if you had a look at the programming of the Arduino um, using CH, we essentially took the input from the variable resistor, read it on the A to D um, converter, and then we use that to control the server motor or the stiff brightness of the LED. Okay, so essentially we're going to be doing a very similar type of thing. Now, firstly, before I do that, I need to declare variables. So I need to go to just before um, void main, or just after void main void, where it says declare your local variables. And again, I'm going to declare as an integer the variable VARR to represent variable resistor, and that's equal to zero. Okay, now that I've done that, I can come back to my while one loop. And what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to say VARR is equal to read underscore ADC port zero. Okay, so that will be looking at the analog to digital conversion pin zero which um, we've got the variable resistor connected to. Okay, now that we've done that, we need to now assign that PWM output to the different um, pins. Okay, so um, what we could do is we could say, well, we know, for example, the, um, the server motor is connected on, um, or let's, let's first look at the, at the LED. The LED is connected to port o, um, OC1B. Okay, so we're going to say OCR1B is equal to VARR divided by 4. Remember, we're dividing by 4 because of the reason that um, the output, your, your PWM output, is a turn of 56, um, as maximum value of 256, because it's an 8 bit number. Well, your ADC is a 10-bit number that we're looking at, um, which has got up to 1,024. So 256 is a quarter of that 1,024, or roughly, in terms of um, um, analog to digital um, conversion values. Okay, so we divide that by 4. Um, then we're going to have OC... Now output, uh, or at least our PWM output 2A, so that's using timer 2A. So we're going to have, we have then OCR2A. So it's like output compare register 1B, output compare register 2A. That's what that OCR refers to. And that is, we initialize your values for your PWM. Okay, so that is equal to, again, VARR. And we can divide that by 4 as well, if you wish to do that and, and test how it, how it will perform. Okay, now another thing we've done is, if you look at that box, we've connected onto it, well, specifically on 
and port D pin 4 we've connected a push button and port D pin 7 we've connected a red LED okay so when it comes to CVAVR whenever you're going to be referring as to an output you're going to be referring as port and then the letter for that so this port D pin 7 so that indicates that it's specifically an output on a port D pin 7 that we are referring to okay and I can go and I can say that is equal to um, uh, or 1 or 0 if I wish or I can make that a 0 if I wish let's just sort of go and set it to whatever value I want it, it to be but what I could also do is I could say well that is equal to pin D pin 4 okay so if you remember um, port D pin 4 is the input from the push button so what you have to remember is that whenever it's an input we use P in okay so that gives you pin and in it whichever port it is D and then pin 4 so pin is used for input while port is used for output okay so essentially what this is doing over here it's basically looking at what the um, input is on port D pin 4 it keeps on polling that and it's going to assign whatever that input is to the output of port D pin 7 again I could have if statements over there and say well if pin D dot 4 is equal to um, so I'll just put it over here as a comment if pin And it's also important to look at the cap locks, also the, the um, uppercase or lower ca case of the letters, um, because that's also important for, for CVAVR. So you could have if pin D pin 4 is equal to a 1, then, um, okay, and what I will do is I will just make it a block comment over there. If it's equal to 1, then um, you can have some code of port d pin 7 is equal to 1 else port d pin 7 is equal to 0 Okay, so this um, piece of code that I've got over here that I've just commented out, essentially that is the same that I've got uh, um, that I've got in terms of whatever port D pin seven is will be whatever it sees as the input on, on on port D pin four. So I'm just it's the same type of thing that you are doing just with the if statement if you wish to use it. Okay, so after we've done that, you will see that. Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to compile it. So you go to project and you go to um, compile. You can compile, but it's also you could just as well build it. So it will build the files will be actually going to the Arduino board. So you either go to project and then build, or you could use Shift F9. Okay, and when this happens, it will check if there's any errors in your code, and it will come up with this window. So it tells me there's one error. There's no warnings, but there's one error. Okay, and over here tells me what the error is. Undefined symbol OCR1B. Okay, now the reason for that is, is that OCR1B is a 16-bit timer, so it's got a high and a low um, um, register for it. Okay, so OCR1B, I need to indicate, is it the low register or the high register that's been um going to be assigned this value. In this specific case, it is a low register that's being assigned this, this um, value. So that's the reason I need to indicate OCR1BL. If it was a high register, I will make it an H over there. And it will be able to register um, that as a high register. But this low register we insert in. Okay, so now if we go to project and build, it's going to run. Okay, so no errors, no warnings, it's built it, and we can click on OK. All right, now that we've done that, we need to then go to Tools. And we need to go to 
um, over here where it says upload to Arduino. So it's either you go to tools and click on upload on Arduino or you can use shift F5. You've got to indicate what the Arduino board is over here. So fortunately this is things you can just set up once and then once it's set up for that specific project it will save it. So we're clicking over there on Arduino Uno. Okay, indicate which COM port it is. Um, I know that this Arduino board is connected to COM port 3. Um, so um, if you do find that it doesn't want to program it, you could then just change your COM ports over there. Okay, and then once we've done it, we're going to click on OK. okay let's see what happens then as it programs the board. And over there it tells me also programs uploaded OK. Okay, now as it programs, it lots of flashing um, to indicate that there is communication happening and it programs the board. Okay, so what does that all, um, let's see how it performs. So if you look at this, if we go and we click push on this button, you'll see the LED switching on and off the red button. Over there, I've pushed it, the LED is staying on. Now it's flashing and it goes off. And that's the reason because of that charge on that um, specific pin. So whenever I push it, my controller doesn't know, okay, well, I'm still seeing the charge on that pin. Should I, should I switch on, switch, should I not? And then as it discharges, it gets to a point where it doesn't know, should, is it now on the on state or off state? And that's where it flashes. Now, if you see how long it takes to switch off over there, it's quite some time. That's why with the pull down resistor, with the switch um, connected in series with it, now when I push it, it goes on. When I release the button, it goes off immediately. Because that charge is dissipated on that specific pin immediately as well. Okay, so we know that is working over there. Let's see how the um, variable resistor works. So um, as I'm increasing the, the voltage over here, you'll see that oh, if I turn it completely off, the green LED is, is um, off. As I increase it slowly, you'll see that it is um, going brighter and brighter until it's fully bright. So um, that is visible over there. And similarly you can see the server motor moving up and down depending on how much I'm turning this variable resistor. So I can move it all the way across and all the way back and control it in that fashion. We've had a look at the basic inputs and outputs using um, Code Vision AVR. We've had a look at the wizard, the different features it gives us, how we're able to control inputs and outputs um, pins, how we're able to control different settings of the mic controller, and then it generates all this code for us, which is really useful. So we don't have to know the ins and outs of the mic controller into that depth where it might take us a few days to get all these settings in place. Um, we're able to then come to where in a while one loop which is place your code over here we're able to input an analog to digital conversion um, onto this VAR pin into onto a variable and that variable having that value we can then use that to divide by four um, or manipulate that value in some equation um, so if it's a temperature sensor and you get a certain value there might be some equation relating to it to be able to calculate what the actual temperature is and then we're able to have outputs um, on specific pins and inputs using our digital input output pins that's available so this is a very basic overview and with what we've looked at now, you essentially going to, those are the basic inputs and outputs that you'll be using for pretty much any project. Um, the only difference is there might be some code or calculations or some artificial intelligence you want to implement um, into it in terms of code. It could be in terms of if statements, it could be in terms of um, certain conditions that need, be, need to be done, certain calculations that need to be done. So all of these different factors can be taken into account um, in your code. And we will look um, uh, um, in the next example as to some of the other features that we have um, learned in this video series and how to implement them in CVAVR.